Welcome to Great Neighborhood Cooks. I'm your host, Rob Kircher. Each week, I'm going to be knocking on the doors of amazing cooks who live down the street or around the corner. Who knows, maybe from your own neighborhood. For the most part, they're unsung cooks known mainly to their family and friends. Or they might be cooks from that great little hideaway restaurant that we love to discover. Either way, their relative obscurity is about to change as I bring them into the spotlight. So who will be the next discovered great neighborhood cook? Well, stay tuned to find out. Who will be the next great neighborhood cook? Well, I'm here in Bonita Springs, Florida. I'm going to catch up with a guy who is a hunter and prepares a lot of wild game. And by the way, he's also a great cook and a baker. So let's go in and, and meet Ed. Hey, Ed. How are Hi, you? Rob. Pretty good. Come on in. Thank you. Love yeah. your home. This is fantastic. Oh, so thank um, you. you're a hunter, right? Right. And you do a lot of uh, preparation of game, right? And uh, do you do uh, deer and, you know, venison? Uh, well, not, right? I used to, but um, we, we, I quit hunting deer um, probably 15 years ago when we moved down here to Florida. Oh, okay. So, so you, you uh, hunt primarily what, duck? Duck and pheasant. And duck and pheasant? Yeah. And what are, what are we going to be doing today? Well, I'm going to pick some duck breast. I got, um, I've been soaking some in teriyaki sauce. And, um, now, Ed, what kind of duck is this? This here is a canvas back. And, a, and I got a canvas back and a mallard in here. Oh, okay. And it, the canvas back you uh, you hunted in where? It, this come out of um, Canada. The canvas back came from Canada. Okay. Yeah, and the mallard come from Nebraska. Oh, Nebraska. Oh, yeah. okay. Ainsworth, Nebraska. I have oh. there's a rancher that lets me hunt there. It's right in the flyway. Oh. So there's a lot of ducks and geese come through there. Who sh I take their grandsons out there hunting quite a bit. So oh, it's fantastic. Been doing why that for why a is the meat uh, so dark on a duck? Well, the it's a dark meat. The whole duck is dark meat. It's not like a tame duck. It, the wild duck is, is dark, dark meat. I've been soaking some in teriyaki sauce, some um, poppers. I'm gonna make some poppers with um, jalapeno pepper and roll them up and put a toothpick in them. Well, that's fantastic. Put them on the grill for a little bit so we got something to snack on while we're fixing dinner. I like that. I like that a lot. So Ed, now you're going to be preparing the stuffing, right? Right. I got breadcrumbs and I put little the oranges in to kind of tone the taste the duck down a little bit. Yeah. And um, it comes out pretty good that way. And it, this is the stuffing for a roasted duck. For a roasted be, duck, yeah. Which be for doing which next. I'm okay. doing next, yeah. Well, let's so, see how you do this. Okay, well, I take a... Uh, throw it all in, huh? Yeah, throw it all in. <laughs> yeah. All and right. And then I take the, the... Now, this is what's interesting to me. The orange... I've never seen this done before. That, that in there. One egg. A cup of hot water. Okay. I got the butter melted. Okay. So pour I just on. pour that in. Oh, and then use a little bit of. Uh, use a little bit of Mrs. Dash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oops. <laughs> it, it. There you go. Usually I use a teaspoon. But then I just um, smash well, it. Use your hands, yeah, exactly. I just smash yeah. it all up here. Yeah. Best way to do it. So what's the next thing? Okay, next thing I, I prepare my duck. Now, this is uh, I find very interesting. Uh, you have to tell the the folks about uh, uh, the fact that you have to leave one of the wings on with yep. the feathers on. Um, so when you go through customs, they can actually recognize it as a certain type of duck. Yeah, and they this, do that by looking at the wing and the feathers, right? Yeah, the, the wing, and also I um, have a, a tag in there. It says um, okay. what kind of duck it was, but this is uh, that's the actual wing. This is the actual wing, and I just take my knife here. Right there. Just, oh, so you just cut right just, up the back of the duck, huh? Just open it up. Wow. See, so right up. I rinse this blood and stuff out of it. 
And I put the breast down. Uh, okay. Then I just take and put the dressing in it. Oh. Look at that. Oh. Now you don't sew this up. No, uh -uh. no, I leave it open leave because it like the dressing that, huh? will swell up too. Okay. Yeah. And then, then the juice out and the butter and the, the water and the juice out of the duck will kind of form around there and do that. Wow. So. Okay, so should we put the cover in it? Yep, put the cover on it. All right, let's put it in the oven. Set my oven on 300 degrees. Start. Also have some baked beans going on in there, as you can see. So, Ed, you're going to be uh, having a little Pinot Grigio here, right? Mm -hmm. Or poppers? Yeah. Well, that should be terrific. Well, let's toast to that yeah. and to your wonderful poppers here. I'm going to dive in and try one of these things. Okay. Yeah. Mmm. That's a good one. Well, this is my first uh, duck popper with jalapeno pepper. Wow. Good, isn't it? Fantastic. Very good. Well, Ed, I got to tell you something that was fantastic. I love the jalapeno in there, and the wild duck is really strong, which I also appreciate. Yeah. So, we're going to come back after the break, and we're going to be doing some more things with Ed, and he's going to have some additional surprises that you're going to absolutely love. So, stay tuned. Where can you explore the ice of the Arctic? Become an engineer and test your designs, or create a masterpiece from your imagination. The Children's Museum of Naples. That's where. Come on is a brain-building powerhouse fueled by steam-based activities and experiences for children of all ages. Join us today as you play, learn, and dream together with your family. The Children's Museum on Livingston Road in Naples. I've been suffering from hearing loss as long as I can remember. It used to be I couldn't hear people in crowded rooms. Now I can't hear people in any situation anywhere. That's severe. Finally, I decided to do something about it, and I went to Beltone Five Star Hearing. If you're anything like Rob and you have to use your phone on speaker all the time, or you find yourself turning the volume up on the television, well, come see us. Uh, it may just be earwax, and we can check that for you. If you're over 55, you should get your hearing check every year. We do this free here at Beltone Five Star Hearing. I've been in this industry since 1972 and uh, helping Rob was a, a wonderful thing. I wear the same hearing aids and I'm excited about how much they help me. Um, I, I have just a, a super high frequency loss, no low frequency, and I'm able to hear and understand my wife clearly. Um, it's, Is that it's, a good thing or a bad it's thing? A, about it's, it's, a it's a good thing. thing. Okay. It's a good thing. I don't want to miss anything my wife says to me, by the way. Uh, the other thing is, uh, of all the hearing aids I fit, Beltone is the best product ever. I started with Beltone in 1972. Uh, I've had 20 years with Beltone off and on over the years, and they are the, the leaders in the industry in far none. You get service, and there's 1,600 uh, facilities in the country, and there's a, a Beltone nearest you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call your local Beltone dealer for service. And that's what hearing aids are all about. They need service after you purchase them. And it's very, very easy to help you with this Bluetooth hearing devices from Beltone. And uh, he's lucky enough that he can just go on his phone. No one will know what he's doing. He can turn the volume up, turn the volume down, change to a different program. And guess what? If he loses the hearing devices, he can find them on that phone. So just come see us. It's, it's free just to have an evaluation. These hearing aids, that, uh, I just love them. I absolutely love them. Jim Gerard, who is the owner of Kitchen by Ambient. I gotta tell you something, it's a beautiful kitchen. You gotta be very proud. This is what it's all about, Rob. I'd like you to meet the homeowner. This is Nadine. Hi, Nadine. Hey, how are you? Rob. Tell us a little bit about the experience that you had. Now, going over the design, and he's like, "What? where do you want this? How many drawers do you want? How do you, do you want? Where do you want? How do you do this? And I'm like, whoa, this is great. This is exactly what I wanted. So they related well. <laughs> very well. Really the kitchen of my dreams. Wow, fantastic. I love it. Love it. So 
So folks, we're back from our break and we're back with Ed. And Ed, you're going to be doing another dish right now, right? And this is a, a different kind of a duck. This is a mailer yeah, duck, this right? This is a mailer duck that was shot in Nebraska, Italian dressing overnight. So we'll um, take it and put it on the grill. So this is going to be a sliced duck breast, right? It's, yeah, it's just duck breast. Okay, cool. Well, let's do that. That's wonderful. Okay. This is our second course. Okay, Ed, now you're gonna put these on the grill, right? Yes, I'm gonna do, um, I just put a little bit of spam on there, put these on. Wow, and it doesn't take long again, it just no, uh, maybe uh -oh. about 10 minutes, something like that? Yeah. Okay. Wow, now do you do anything else to this? Yeah, I put a little fajita seasoning on there. Oh, okay, look at that. That I have. Wow. So add the mallard duck breast, they're now grilled and they're ready. They're medium rare, right? Right. Okay, so what's the next thing? You're gonna slice them up? Yep, slice them up. Wow, look at that. Ooh. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. Now you're gonna plate these, and uh, what do you wanna have with a side dish? We have um, baked beans. Oh, baked beans, wonderful. Yeah. Well, that should go perfectly well, huh? Mm-hmm. So you gotta be very popular with your friends and neighbors. Uh, I'm sure they well, all wanna have some of this uh, duck. My meat. wife belongs to the wine and dine. Okay. Okay, so Ed, now we're gonna try your wonderful baked beans here. They look mm -hmm. fantastic. So is this another recipe that you came up with on your own? Well, it's it's kind of, yeah. But let me help you here. I mean, they smell wonderful. Okay. Okay, well, you know what? Why don't we, uh, we'll have a, let's we'll, dive into that. And uh, well, I'm gonna definitely try the duck here. That looks so good. For and your baked beans. Mm. Are you ready? Three. Let's try this. Wow, that's very different. Mm -hmm. it is, it, it different is from what we had before. Recognizably different from yeah. uh, the canvas back. A little bit this stronger the taste now. Yeah. Okay. So add, uh, the ducks are plated, right? Right. Ducks, I usually put the whole duck on and let them kind of cut it up however they oh, want. Yeah. Looks so, like fun, yeah. And then we'll, I'll give a little dish of um, the carrots and the rice and then a little bit of dressing. And, Great. Um, we'll dig well, let's, in. let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. I'll help you here. And the dressing, wow. Thank you. You're welcome. And let's make a little toast here to this other wonderful dish that you just prepared. Here's to you. And I can't wait to dive in here. It's gonna be fantastic, I'm sure. <laughs> Hope so. Ooh, that's good Chardonnay. Okay, so we just kind of cut our own duck, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, let's try that. And you can just start right here at the the breast, okay. slice right down there. That would do the same thing on three, you ready? Okay. One, two, three. Wow. Again, it's got a different flavor. That's the duck flavor there. That is the duck flavor. Yeah. That that's, is that's, incredible. That's, that's incredible. Uh, there's no, no disguise in the duck here. Wow. Well, and I gotta tell you something, so I want to thank you again for allowing us into your wonderful home and for sharing these incredible duck dishes. So folks, to learn more about Ed and to download his recipes, and also we have some behind the scenes shots you can take a look at it, why don't you go to our website, which is www.greatneighborhoodcooks.com, and you're gonna have all these wonderful things at your disposal. Wonderful. I'll tell you what, let's dive into a little more of this, okay? And we'll be back. Okay, thank you. 
At the Roma's Gourmet Market and Restaurant, they do things differently. They do it the authentic way. For example, why is their incredible bread and pastries the best you've ever tasted? Well, it's because they're made artfully and lovingly every day, using only the freshest ingredients possible. The same care and thoughtfulness goes into their freshly brewed, custom blended coffee. The Roma's Gourmet Market and Restaurant at the Promenade in Bonita Springs is the closest place to Little Italy in Southwest Florida. On September 10, 2017, Hurricane Irma unleashed her fury and powerful winds on southwest Florida, leaving many homeowners in a state of dismay. I was one of them. Days turned into weeks, and that turned into months. Among the maze of promising roof contractors and so-called experts, one company stood out, ACC Mastercraft. And I want you to do me a favor. Folks, contact them. They're on Trade Center Way. They are unbelievable. They do two things that I was blown away by. One, they believe in service, and two, they believe in helping you. Can you imagine that? It's true. Contact them. It's the best thing you can possibly do for yourself. And when you do, I want you to call me and let me know how you make up because they're unbelievable. Seriously. I'm here with Francis J. Cuomo. He's the owner of Jerome's Gourmet Market. And Francis, every time I come in here, it's just bustling with activity. I oh, love it. Thank God. Yeah. That's why we're here. <laughs> we're here to feed people. How many people do you get on a daily basis? Well, it depends. You know, certain times of the year, like now, we average around 3,000 people a day on a Saturday and a Friday. Uh, Sundays, we close a little early at 6, and we average around 15 to 1,800 people a day on a Saturday. So it's, uh, it just keeps growing. And people the restaurant yesterday, uh, oh, about 1,100 people. Really? In the restaurant Wonderful. alone. Wonderful. That's not including that. Well, so you know, you, you've got that magic going for here. Yeah. You know, you really do. It's the sight, the sound, the aroma, everything that uh, yes. is, you're so well known for. I give God the credit. <laughs> he gave me the energy and the foresight. So, folks, if you really want to have a gourmet experience, you want to come to Daroma's Gourmet Market in Benita Springs and it's Little Italy right here in... Southwest Florida. Southwest Florida. Our own creation. the next discovered great neighborhood cook while well, I'm here in Benita Springs, Florida at the famous Daroma's Gourmet Market and Restaurant. And within this complex is the Pasteria, and that's where we are right now. And this place is noted for making the best fresh pasta this side of Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, which is the real Little Italy of New York, by the way. Come on, let's go meet the visionary Francis J. Cuomo. Hey, hello again. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, doing great, thank you. Good to you see know, you, every, always. Good to see you, and every time I come in here, I don't know, I'm just blown away by all the wonderful products you have. They're oh, eye thank popping. you. Thank and you. I, again, as I indicated in our last uh, interview and show, we have over 120 products. This is our gift shop and pasta so we do a tremendous amount of gift baskets during the holidays. The girls do a fabulous job in here, and uh, we're just so blessed to have them. But the pasta deer is where all the fresh pasta is made, as you said, and uh, it's an amazing thing to watch and actually to eat. I can't wait to go in there, but before we do, I want to ask you a question because we talked about this a little bit before. Um, the number of visitors that you actually come, that come oh. to your, um, your, your market and the restaurant, you were talking about filling up. Tell me that line. Well, it's true. We did some calculation between the uh, market, the restaurant, the banquet room, and the gift shop and pasta deer. Uh, every 15 days, we can fill up Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Talk about the Bronx. Every 15 days. That's amazing. Yankee Stadium gets filled Francis, up. that's incredible. That's a lot of people going that's a lot of people. all of the different doors that we have through this operation. It's amazing. And, <laughs> well, a, and a great team to accommodate. Them. Well, that's I know that. Well, well you, you're really. the visionary. You put that great team yeah, together. Yeah, but they do the job. Well, I know they do. Uh, let's go into Pasteria. Yeah, yeah, let's go see Rosemary and Rhino. Let's do it. So, Francis, this is the behind the scenes yeah, of the operation. Yeah, this, is, this right? is actually the... Where it all happens. Where it all happens. For I the love pasta it. Here, that's for sure. It's amazing. That's well, they have sure. a great display right here. Oh, my goodness. Look they work so hard here. Rosemary, a friend of mine, almost 42 years already. 42 years. So, Rose and Reiner are, are amazing at making fresh pasta. Well, let's bring them in. You know, Rosemary, come here. There's, there's come so on. much involved with making fresh pasta. Oh, I know. You think, oh, you mix some eggs and flour. Come here, Reiner. Come on in. You're part of this team. Folks, this is Rosemary, and this is Reiner. Hello, and Rob. You guys, uh, I know you work like crazy, and you're always here. 
They Maybe are. not 24-7, but close to it, right? Close yeah. to it, pretty close to it. We, we like to Even watch things. Even more than things. me. <laughs> it's like we live here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, your product right. is unbelievable. I mean, everybody loves your fresh pasta, no question about yeah, it. Yeah, and there's so much that goes into it, as I said. You know, our, our machines are from Italy. They took quite a while to get here when we first opened. Uh, and having the right machinery to actually produce this fresh pasta and the variety of cuts and the raviolis, the manigotti, the stuffed shells, the gnocchis, the gabadellis, the fettuccini, the papadella, yeah. the bucatini, <laughs> the capellini, <laughs> and on and on and on. So, and there's so many dyes and different cuts, and, and, and unless you really know what it takes to do it, you know, you really just don't get the gist of it. So, Rosemary, can you walk us through the extruders? Because I don't think people really understand how you get these shapes that you have for all these various pastas. That's, uh, that's probably one of the most exciting machines that we use, and it has a lot of uh, varieties. Um, you can see we have a few different types of pasta, like the uh, Rotelli spirals. This would be an extruded product. Anything that's tubular or shaped has to go through an extrusion process. And as you can see, the fettuccine is a, a flat cut pasta. It kind of boggles the mind with all the different oh, shapes and sizes you have there. Almost 2,000 different pastas. 2,000? Yes, wow. 2,000. These are the uh, laminator dies and the pasta goes through the die, and then it gets cut flat. And then we use brass dies. Um, you hear the um, uh, words brass die, and you know that the pasta is coming out of something that has been handcrafted. These wow. are all handcrafted really? dies, and uh, they make the pasta uh, have a nice uh, texture, especially on the outside. So what's the first processor? What do we go through? Well, you actually have to make the pasta. So here's uh, the first machine and the process that Rose and Reiner follow every day. So, so Reiner, what do you do? How do you, okay, so how do you make this thing this, work? This sensor is all laminated and it takes up the glass So we put flour and we put eggs so we don't use any water. Uh, for the laminator, we like to use just plain durum flour. When we use the extruder, we mix our flours because it gives them a little tougher taste, like an al dente taste, but you. This has been pre-mixed, so it's mixing and extruding out. What we're getting here is a, a thick pasta sheet, actually, what you have here. We put this pasta sheet on a wall. Okay, and it makes it nice, not too, too wet, just right to cut, cut the, uh, the pasta. We are making the pappadella pasta now, which is a flat uh, cut. It is a thin cut and a wide cut. And then when we have the first scraps, we put it in and we mix it. So we don't use any of this. Here we go. Wow, look at that. This is uh, another one of our machines from Italy. We're very proud of this machine. This is really a workhorse. And right now we're extruding out Bugatini pasta. Uh, Bugatini is very fashionable right now. You see uh, a lot of um, uh, celebrity chefs on TV uh, working with Bugatini. Uh, although most of them work with uh, dry pasta, there's very few of them that are working with uh, fresh Bugatini. Just gonna give it a cut, clean it up a little bit. But uh, we can make this product as short or as long as we like. We usually make it uh, a good uh, 13 to 14 inches, so it sits nice uh, in our package and on the plate. Now, Francis, they look so amazing and so appetizing. Oh, uh, can we so go over good. to the restaurant and have you actually prepare oh, something? You got, you're going to make me put my chef coat on again? I, again, again. All right. Yeah. I, you look so I, handsome I, with the chef well, coat. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I got to get the dust off of it again. So now, I understand through all it. your years of owning various restaurants yes. that you actually have created a, a lot of these yourself, right? So you're oh, running. absolutely. I've, uh, I've created a signature dish for each restaurant. Capolini, Devin Anthony's is a restaurant called Devin Anthony's I owned in New York, in Westchester actually, in Hastings on the Hudson, and that dish was created for that. Uh, Villaggio's restaurant in Jupiter I used to own. Yeah. Linguini Villaggio's was a signature dish for that restaurant, and uh, I think that's the one I'll cook for you today with our fresh oh. linguini. 
How about that? It sounds delicious. I can't right. wait. Well, let's, let's go. Come let's on. Go. Let's, let's go. Let's have some fun. So, folks, let's watch Chef Francis J. Cuomo at work. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. Welcome into uh, another side of my world. Yes. <laughs> Goes way back since I was about 14, 15 years old. So, as I wow. told you earlier, yeah. I've created a lot of different dishes for uh, different restaurants that I've opened. Uh, I'd love to make you a little fresh pasta linguine dish oh. that I used to make for a restaurant uh, called Villaggio's. Villaggio's. Uh, so let me let me show you. Yeah, let's actually, do, uh, let's see, you know, the, a lot of in, a lot of ingredients here. is going into this dish. Actually, so always starts with actually our own olive oil, and that olive oil is from uh, Sicily. We always start with a little bit of uh, butter and olive oil. Most people don't don't realize that, but there it is. We have fresh garlic that we chop daily. This dish is more on the healthier side of things. It's, uh, there's no cream, there is a little bit of butter. We saute our own uh, onions, sun-dried tomato. We grill our chicken, just the right amount. Of course, this gets uh, fresh spinach. We have a beautiful seasoning mix that we make. Fresh basil, a little fresh chopped Italian parsley. Of course, we use, in this process, we use the Romo's white wine. Oh, absolutely. So, very important uh, ingredient in some of our dishes and also to, to drink. Basically, we saute everything really well. We add the fresh spinach at the very end, like so. Of course, you know, spinach is uh, something that breaks down really quickly. So, we want to keep it green. We want to keep it fresh. And at this point, we put a little fresh tomato. Gives a little color, a little bit more moisture. They cook really fast as well. And at this point, we put a little bit of our roasted chicken stock. We don't use this regular. We roast the bones with, with all our mirepoix. Take a couple of ladles. And of course, our Italian Parmesan blend, which, again, I told you last time, I can't give you all our secrets. But we use four different cheeses in that. I know two of them. You know only two. We won't tell you the rest of them. <laughs> Basically, we take our fresh linguine that's cooked in our, is made in our fresh uh, pasteria. See, it didn't take that long, did it? I think about three minutes, maybe. Yeah, maybe wow. four minutes tops. The key is to have a nice hot pan at all times. Look at that. See that? All fresh ingredients. Unbelievable. And all the juices come together with the sun-dried tomatoes, the grilled chicken, all the flavors. The very last ingredient, we take roasted pignoli pine nuts. We put it in there, it gives a little crunch, a little more flavor. We always try to put a little twist on it, get most of the pasta on the bottom, so that a lot of the ingredients end up on top. Perfect amount every time. Nice sauce with the butter, olive oil, garlic. And of course, a little bit more Parmesan on the top. And we usually garnish it with a nice piece of basil. Linguine Bellagio. You gotta come here, you're gonna love it, and we'll see you the next time. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, my pleasure always.